Hi, I'm Richard from Electric Classic Cars, and on this week's episode, it's finally time to take the Maserati Ghibli out for a spin. Let's get into it. Now, I'm really excited because I've been waiting to show you this car for some time. We actually had it finished about a year ago, but I'll come back to that later because, first of all, I want to tell you what it's all about really it's a 1967 Maserati Ghibli designed by Shijaro and uh, this is actually quite a special car because this was the actual car that was on the stand in 1967 at the London Motor Show to launch the actual car so it's quite special now originally this car came with a 4.7 litre Maserati V8 but sometime in the past that went pop and it was replaced by a less powerful 4.2 litre Indy V8 and that's what was in it when the owner bought it in 2000 and unfortunately again that also went bang and uh, over the years he's uh, tried in vain to find a, a replacement Maserati 4.7 or 4.9 litre V8 to put in it but that was a fruitless task, unfortunately. So he came to the conclusion to electrify it. And why not? And that's why he came to see us. So what's in it now? Well, let's open a bonnet and find out. I feel I should be doing a ta-da moment now. So, uh, right, here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> so what have we got in here now? Well, uh, we have got a... 50 kilowatt hour battery pack split um, mainly in the front because that's where all the weight was in the original car and a small battery pack in the rear where the fuel tanks used to be and underneath this battery pack is a dual Hyper 9 setup so that's two Hyper 9s end on end now this gives a little bit less horsepower so it's 240 horsepower I think it is but more torque so it's very very comparable if you like in feel to the original engine and we've mated that Hyper 9 system to the original gearbox and that beastie down there grrr, was why this car was delayed by a year because we had to get that rebuilt when the car was all together last year we took it for a spin and the gearbox it no worky so we had to find a specialist to rebuild it and now it worky so now we can take it for a proper spin so that's what's in here as usual it's completely bolt in the mounts are mounted off the original engine mounts down there so completely reversible to all you uh, people out there that wonder if it's completely reversible it is um, so that's what's underneath the uh, bonnet so let's have a look at the back of the car So moving around to the rear of the car, uh, I want to cover off the wheels first of all, because these were optional extra Birani, not Biryani, was it? No. Birani. Birani, well Birani done. Birani wheels, uh, wire wheels. These were optional extras at the time, because uh, the standard ones, I believe, were magnesium, weren't they? Yeah, magnesium alloy standard, but they were optional. Yep, so optional wheels on here. So. Um, dual tanks um, there's one flap here one flap the other side and there was a switch inside where you actually flip from one tank to the other which was quite funky so we've got the charge socket behind here and we've got a um, header tank coolant uh, filler on the other side we're coming around to the rear this is where it kind of shows that it's an early car because anybody that knows their Maserati Ghiblis will see it's got this bit that comes down there which is uh, Shows you it's an early car, because uh, the later ones, this just went straight across here. So, back to the front again now, because I've got a question for all you Maserati experts out there. And it's regarding this front bumper, which we had to replace because it just crumpled in our hands when the car was uh, with us because of rust. And this was a replacement one. But the original bumper had these lights hanging from the top, and this one has them on the bottom. Where should they be, Maserati experts? From the top or on the bottom? Bear in mind, this is a 1967 car. And another thing which, uh, while I'm at the front, I didn't even realise this until the customer told me, but the number plate represents the typo of the car, MSA 115, which is pretty cool. Now, I reckon you got it easy today, Tim, because there's no bad angle on this car, is there? It's stunning. Uh, I prefer this as a design to the E-Type Jag. 
bigger a Jag. Oh, it's much prettier than an E-Type. E E-Type Jag is such a simpler design. It's like a squished Smarties tube, really, isn't it? Yeah, and, and the this... more I look at this, the more I like it. Yeah, I, I, I really do like the aesthetics of this car. And I feel it should be in Italy somewhere and the Stelvio Pass listening to Matt Munro as we're driving along. But unfortunately, we're not. We're in cold, windy Wales with some great roads, don't get me wrong. But I think it's time to go for a spin in this car and then Tim's going to have to listen to my impressions of Matt Munro. Let's get I'd it. I'd rather not. Right, that's it. On. Our first thing to mention is the fact that where the switch was to switch between the fuel tanks, it's now an EPB. Ah. Electric parking brake, so there's no handbrake down here, and the handbrake was rubbish. Um, now it's like a modern car. And off we go. Handbrake uh, off, and uh, now it's probably worth mentioning how to drive an electric car with gears. So what we've done is the motor that we've chosen for this is similar in power and torque, let's say, to the original engine, so we don't explode the original gearbox, but also it's similar in rev range. So it goes up to about 7,000, but really 6,000, the torque starts to drop off a cliff anyway. So as far as RPM is concerned, it's very similar to the original engine, which means you can change gear. So you can change gear as you would if it was the petrol version, if you wanted to. Yep. You can just go up and down the box as you, oh, well, you have normally. To. You have to, because otherwise, if you leave it in second gear, it's going to run out of uh, uh, revs. Right. And uh, you'll hear the gearbox screaming, change gear! Um, so... Another thing which is a bit odd with electric and gears is because the motor's not spinning, I can put it in second, third, fourth, anything at the moment. Whereas with an engine, an engine's always having to spin, isn't it? So you have to dip the clutch when you're static. When you're static in an electric car with a gearbox, the motor's stopped. So if you're not moving, the motor's not moving, which means I can put it in any gear. So at the moment, it's in second, and away we go. Here we go. So now we're up and running in second gear, hardly ever used first because second gear you've got a lot of torque, zero RPM with an electric motor. Second gear we can start putting it into third gear. So now, because the, we are moving and the motor's spinning, we have to use the clutch to change gear. So now, put the clutch in, change gear, just like normal. Now, turning this car and reversing is interesting, let's say, because, have you noticed? Ah, oh, what's missing? Yeah. No wing mirrors. No wing mirrors, mate. No wing mirrors. I reckon the Italian designer was, uh, no, 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 no wing mirrors. That's the worst Italian accent that I can uh, do, but uh, yeah, I think the designer uh, overruled the uh, engineers in that one. But I noticed that it has got the number one Italian design feature. They've built the car around the ashtray. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and a big ashtray at that. This is a really comfy car, isn't it? It's, like a, it's a proper Grand Tourer. Oh, yeah. I could quite easily sit for hours in this thing. Talking about... Uh, like time in the car, uh, something I always forget to mention is range in these videos. Um, so we did a range test uh, this week just gone, just driving normally on A roads, uh, normal speeds, and we got about 160 mile range, which is pretty good for a small battery pack like this. Oh, testing the brakes there. Good brakes, aren't they? They are very good brakes. Yeah. Uh, that was a a weird quirk that I'd never seen before on cars when we started working on this, and that's the fact it's got two calipers on the front. So it's got two calipers on the front on each disc? Yeah. Yeah, never seen that before. Oh, yeah. So the Maserati Ghibli was made between 1967 and 1973, and this is an early dash, if you like, because it's got the stalk switches rather than the rocker switches which are on the later ones yeah. but all of the ends of the um, stalks all the icons were rubbed off you couldn't figure out what what they each were so we ended up having to remake and reprint all the um, 
stickers, if you like, that go on the ends of the stalks. Yeah, looks really and good. We had to do a print of some like a hundred of them. Yeah. So if any Maserati Ghibli owners out there want some uh, switch shirt stickers and they got stalks, let us know. We got loads of spare ones. I enjoyed that. I don't know about you, Tim, but yeah, I can tell you, you get a smile on your face big time. It's good, isn't it? I think that's one of the nicest looking cars we've we've tested. It's uh, but it's done him. As far as the aesthetics is concerned, I totally agree with you. This is one of the nicest cars. In fact, I'd probably say this is the most beautiful electric car out there at the moment, new or old. I think you're right. I just, I just, the more I look at it, the more I like it. But and I liked it a lot when I first looked at it. Yeah. But now we've we've been in it and driving. I think the total package. This is one of the best cars we've ever built. Yeah, I mean, it's not a sports car, is it? No, it, it's, 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 a, a it's a Grand Tourer, Grand Tourer. comfortable armchair seats. But for a car that was built in 1967, I could drive this as a daily driver. It's not a city car, though, is it? It's not a city car. No, I'll give you that. If I was going to drive it a lot in the city, I'd definitely put power steering on it. That is for sure. Or go to the gym more. <laughs> but as far as the, the total package of this car, it works perfectly. The low down torque of the electric motors really is you know, matching it, I think, the original V8 engine. It's still got that engaging drive with the uh, gear changes as well. And hopefully now we've addressed the unreliability which came with the original V8 engines that the customer has had hampering his enjoyment of this car over the decades. So now we've addressed that, and we've got to give it a good clean and hand it over to the customer and he can now enjoy it with some maintenance free trouble free hopefully driving for the next de a few decades so on that note i think it's time for me and tim to find a pub go and have a sunday lunch and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>